Good afternoon guys, it's Monday and I think it's about 2.50ish and I um, am feeling very proud because I said I was going to do a Facebook Live once a week and it's Monday. Yeah, so I can breathe for the rest of the week. Um, so I'm going to see if anybody's live because again, um, if you are there, if you can let me know, um, let me know whether you're doing it on replay once I post this. Um, I did want to talk to you about my new piece, which is gorgeous. That's all I can say about it. It took me um, a long time to do it, I will admit. However, um, it is a... Um, it was a very badly abused piece. Um, let me just, I'm not sure, oops, if you can hear me. Um, so I got this piece and I posted a before on my Facebook and it was one of those pieces where I saw it on, I think it was Craigslist. It was either Craigslist or the Facebook market page. Um, and it was a little bit rough, to say the least, but it had potential and I drove, I think like 50 minutes to get there and um, the house was um, less than desirable and this piece was just dirty and smelly and I actually, I went with my son, um, because he's kind of like my mind, my bodyguard. Um, and I went with my son and honestly, I really didn't check the entire piece out because I wanted to be out of the house. It was one of those, it's like, let's just exchange money for goods and then I'm on my way. And I was driving home and thinking, um, I shouldn't have bought this, what was I thinking? And it was, you know, smelly. And as I loaded it into the car, I noticed that there was a lot of wood veneer missing on the sides. Um, there was this weird um, wood trim that just did not look like it fit with the piece. And it was missing um, this carving on this side, which you can't see. Um, but I have replaced it, see? So, um, it needed a lot of work and what I wanted to do was kind of like make it Frenchy. I still wanted to do the patina uh, because it seems that even if I try to do trendy finishes or I, I in my mind I'm going to, okay, I'm going to do an ombre or I'm going to do, I never end up doing it and I don't know if I physically can't do those kind of um, finishes, but I tend to just do what's natural for me. And what's natural for me is playing with product, putting product on, taking product off, um, and just kind of experimenting. And it turns out that this is um, where I end up with. And I, I do love it. Hey, Lynn. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Oh, hi, Anita. Thank you for telling me you're here. I'm just, I'm gonna be talking to myself. So it's nice to know that I've got friends here. So, this piece, um, where do I begin? Let me think. So, okay. So it's not a custom piece, it's just for me. Um, well, I'm gonna be selling it, but so I wanted blues, I wanted greys, I want browns. Um, hey Cindy, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and so what I did with this piece is a little bit of a departure from what I normally do because I wanted to mix traditional paints. Um, and when I say traditional, I mean like case and paints. Um, and I wanted to mix it with product that you can buy. So I made my own paint. Now, there, <laughs> I'm, I'm not 
an expert at all. The reason why I made my own paint, I've done it probably about three or four times. Um, I like doing it because it lets me play with product. Um, so I think the creative side of me enjoys that part to see if I can actually, can I make paint? Can I make good paint? Um, what I don't like about making my own paint is it's actually, um, I find to be a pain in the, and the reason why, there's so many reasons. Um, so th there's different kinds of paints you can use, right? So, you know, you have the latex and the oil. There's additives that you can buy that if you put them in with the latex paint, it becomes essentially um, a chalk paint, or at least it has the finish of a chalk paint. And that's all very nice. But for me, I'm always going to know it was latex. You know what I mean? I'm like, if I have money and I want to buy a designer coat, I would rather buy the designer coat, you know, save more money, buy the designer coat than have a knockoff that's cheaper because ultimately I will always think as I'm you know wearing this knockoff coat it's really not Burberry it's a Beeberry you know so in my mind um, I'm not going to be messing with latex paint because I hate latex paint absolutely hate it so there's that product um, there's um, paint that you make with, you know, lime and plaster of Paris. Um, now, technically, when you're looking at the materials that you use, they're very cheap. Um, plaster of Paris is what? Not cheap at all. Um, it's very cheap. The problem with it is that you have to make it yourself. So you have to um, make sure there's no lumps. That part I'm good with. The expensive part becomes when you have to buy all the pigments. Now with this, I kind of knew what kind of color, but I wasn't prepared to like buy a slew of pigments and wear them to try and get that. And the reason that it's so hard for me to do is like when you have, let's say your basic white paint and you want to add pigments to it, yeah, you have to measure it and I, I have such a hard time measuring things. I usually just eyeball it. But then when you, um, so you will get your pigments and you'll mix them with a little bit of water and you'll look at it and say, that's a really nice color. Good job, Diane, you did good. And then you mix it with, you know, your white um, chalk paint. So then the color changes. And then because it has lime, when you actually paint with it, it dries a different color. And then whether you put linseed oil or wax, that changes the color. So there's like so many variables to, you know, you getting the color that you set out with. I hate that. I, you know, generally speaking, if I'm working with a piece, I have to know um, what color I'm going to end up with. With my pre-made paints, I know. I know what mixes with what. Um, so, yes, homemade paints can be fun, can be very tricky. I mean, I've had paints that have been the same recipe and the finishes has been you know very different and not necessarily in a good way and those are the ones that I've never posted on my page uh, my Facebook page another thing with make with using homemade um, paint is that typically the only work on raw wood now <clears throat> if I wanted to um, paint this with my case and paint 
I would have to strip it down to draw wood to make it adhere. I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm, how old am I? I'm 55 soon. I don't have time to strip furniture. I don't, I really. You know, maybe if I was in my 20s or 30s, I might entertain the idea. No, I'm not doing it. So the one way or the two ways you go around with that is you um, cover your piece of furniture with hide glue. That will give you the cohesion um, for the paint. Hide glue or rabbit glue stinks to high heaven. And I know this because I have some. It's disgusting. And I, for some reason, I don't like the idea of filling every square inch of this piece with glue. It, it just doesn't um, ring true for me. The other way you can do it is that you paint it. Um, your base coat is pre-made chalk paint, the regular paints that you can buy. You know, I've been using Wise Owl. So I used, um, what did I use? Wise Owl Abyss um, <clears throat> for my foundation because that would give me um, the adhesion that I needed. And then I just played around with the paint I made. And again, I really didn't know what color I would end up with. I ended up with a beautiful color, um, pure luck. Nothing to do with skill, just pure luck. I just poured the pigment that I had and um, came out with this. Now, I did use um, shellac, which I love. I just love shellac. Um, and then I um, I covered it with the Wise Owl matte paint um, sealer, and it's I actually I'm really loving it because there's no paintbrush strokes. I I love it. So I did that, and then if you can see inside, I didn't paint anything. I didn't do any inside. Ooh. Oh my God, it smells so lovely. I, oh. I, I use the um, furniture cell to kind of like condition the wood. And because it was like really smelly when I bought it, you know, I, I cleaned it out with vinegar and water, and left the doors open. Um, and But then I put the furniture cell. And what I actually didn't realize when I was talking about it the other, well, last week, was that it actually deodorizes wood. And, um, yeah, smells good, smells like a lumberjack in there. Um, so I did the um, dead mat, the dead flat, I think it's called dead flat, is it called, or oh, just matte, matte top. Um, it's not going anywhere, it's like, solid solid and then just for an added tree I put the wax over that now the wax um, is not gonna sink into the wood as it normally does the the furniture salve I'm using wax and salve inter interchangeably um, the wise owl salve generally um, will sink into the wood so it's not like a top coat as normal, regular, like your any slow wax is, you know, it's usually stays on the top. This one kind of sucks into the wood, which is why it conditions it um, and makes your wood smell like a lumberjack or like the, the one where you want to run through the fields and be chased. And I run really slow, so I'm really easy to chase. Um, but I did put it over the top coat, and the reason I did that is because I want the smell. And so, me and my daughter this morning, we were smelling it. My husband's like, and I'm like, just smell. Oh, so um, this is my piece. I think it's gorgeous. I actually. Um, 
let me let me do a close up because this is um, the original molding can you see there excuse my shadow there you go and this is the one I made so um, I'm quite quite happy with that it's the first time I've actually made um, wood moldings and um, I'm going what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tell you how I did it not today but I'll do um, a tutorial on it and um, I spoke with a company of the product I used and I just emailed them and said my god this is so cool I'm like suddenly I'm a wood molding queen and they're gonna do a giveaway so I will um, once I get all the product I will do a giveaway and I'll let you know how you can replicate these beautiful carvings um, and what else so I guess to backtrack or to let you know what I was talking about yes you can make um, your own pain it's so it's finicky it is finicky would I, is it practical I don't think it's practical um, would I do it on a regular basis not in a chance no um, this one I like I said I did it I had the weekend to do um, my husband and kids went to a Super Bowl game because they are great um, Pats fans I stayed home painting I was like in heaven so um, homemade paint cheap expensive when it comes to the pigments um, you have to really know how to blend the color that you want which for me is is not happening I I let the experts do that I just want to paint um, the stuff in the latex paint can't do it I'm sorry it's just I, I don't want to do that it's, it's latex paint at the end of the day um, <clears throat> so but yes you can interchange so my Wiesel products um, worked over the homemade paint um, so if you want to try them you know try but I'm not going to do it um, and another thing so if you have any questions about you know what I'm doing um, let me know I will gladly um, help you or if I can't I'll tell you I can't help you but I did want to show you this it will be for sale um, I'd really like to keep it but um, but I do have a really big announcement to make and hopefully I'm gonna make it tomorrow I'm really excited um, I was just kind of like finalizing details um, this afternoon so I am super excited I think you might like it um, but yeah so I'm, I'm feeling I'm doing um, more it's really cold and yucky out here um, it's like 40 so for Oregon that's pretty cold so let me know that you're here um, give me some thumbs up oh okay I'm seeing you people please feel free to share oh Anita did you layer the colors or just apply different you did not blend did you layer um, I no actually I layered I kind of in my mind for some reason I, I don't like symmetry because I, I think things don't wear out symmetrical and so I knew like over here that corner there I wanted it to be um, kind of more rustic and so no I just keep doing the layers and um, putting them on taking them off but no I 
I, I'm not, I know some people do like, you know, I'm going to paint blue here and then we'll paint some green down here. Um, that's typically not how I do it. I just, the first, actually, you know what, the first probably two coats I do are just plain. I really, um, two coat paint is easy. Um, the, the layering and using the glazes and then you know the shellac and then taking some shellac off and then repainting that and then maybe putting a sealer over that and then maybe painting on top of that just to kind of like give lots and lots of textures and um, variations in color and I am by no means an expert but this is just how I seem to paint, whether I want to paint this way or not, it just keeps coming out like that. So, does that answer your question, Anita? It does. Um, yeah, so I will go and finish my tea, and hopefully, I will be back tomorrow and I will give you my news and hope that you are excited and um, go from there. Lisa, really love the layers and color textures. Thank you, thank you so much. It, you know, it's, um, yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm always hesitant when I take pictures of pieces like this because um, the camera just um, doesn't know where to focus. It's like so many different variations but it actually um, worked out. It's not all twinny, it's not the same. No, I don't do twinny Eileen. I do, you've got to be individual and unique and not balance, right? So, but I do love these carvings. And so, I guess to end this story, the fact that I had buyer's remorse um, with this piece and I think I paid too much for it and I felt really like oh my god why don't you just say no to pieces Diane what is wrong with you get some willpower you don't have to buy every piece you see right moderation be selective don't go 50 minutes to like this little house and have to take your son to protect you if it's not something that you love. So this is my inner dialogue. Um, oh God, it's my Tetley tea, Janice. Cannot do without my Tetley tea. Um, Ophelia. I know, I love Ophelia. I think Ophelia still lives in Hillsborough. If I'm not mistaken, I have a client who has probably, I think she's got at least four or five of my pieces. I think <laughs> she's like one of my, she's like my museum. I just, she should be my, my workplace. I'll just send people to see Joy <laughs> because Joy's got all my pieces. Um, looks like green textures, what colour? Um, that is a great question, Lynn. What colour is it? I, I don't know, I just made it. I can never, <laughs> I can never do this colour again. I have no idea how many, you know, grams of this pigment because you know I had like this kind of like bluey green pigment and that looked fine and then I added some burnt umber because you know I had it I don't know how much I added it was like and then I thought what the heck I have a bit of black and so you know I was like constantly adding pigment into it and pigment is expensive I had this um, this blue pigment which is like this big and it costs probably like $30 um, and that's just one color and so you can imagine if you want to layer a piece with lots of different colors 
your price shoots up. It really does. Um, so, no, it's a bluey green. Let's say that that's a safe um, assumption. And there's a little bit of gray. Um, I'm not sure where the gray came from, actually. <laughs> um, oh, and I used, um, what did I use? I made a, um, a black glaze, I believe. Yes, I did. So you can see some black pieces. Um, but yeah, I, I, I will never do you use any acrylics um, for my furniture. I'm assuming for my furniture. Um, I have mixed chalk and acrylic together. I should work pretty good together. Um, you know, I'm not in love with acrylic. I will do um, acrylic it, when I'm doing image transfer and usually when I'm doing image transfer, especially on the big pieces, you will always end up losing some image, always. I've never ever had a big um, image transfer where it's been 100%, never happened. I always have to go back and hand paint details and I'm not. I swear I am not um, an artist that way. Um, so I will use acrylics to kind of fudge my way through. Um, but that's the only time I will use acrylic. And I, you know, I think I just, I think because I started with a chalk paint, um, I just tend to stick with that because, um, I don't know for because it's easy you know I, I know like I said I know the colors I know how they're gonna work together I know um, I know where I'm gonna get so for me I it's more um, the convenience and again like I say this was two days just out in my garage, sat on my little bottom with my um, music playing, having fun, but I, I can't do that. I've done black and white transfers. Uh, no, no, so here's the thing about image transfer. So I've been, um, I've used a few mediums. I've used Mod Podge. I'm sure the nice people, but the product is not very good for image transfers. Um, I've used Arson Enhancements, which has been my go-to um, for a long time. I've used, uh, I think I used Annie Sloan's decoupage glue for one, um, and that worked. I mean, I. And again, with everything, with every medium, I lose parts of the image. Um, and I have been told, and I'm gonna try this, that um, Wise Owl, the top coat, this one that I use on here, works as an image transfer medium. That's what they told me, and I'm like, so I'm, I'm going to try that on my next piece because if that actually works, um, I'm going to be happy. I really am. That's what I use. Sorry, I went for the paint. Now, did you like Mod Podge? I just, um, it, it, it wasn't clear for me. Um, so... And, and I think, you know, if you're doing a big piece, then, you know, it's fine to, you know, finally get all the backing off and then realize that, oh my God, my image isn't that clear. What a waste of time. Let me have a glass of wine. So no, I don't want to do that. Um, but no, I'm going to try the Wise Owl and see how that works. It was okay. Yeah. I mean... It's kind of like one of those things, if you're doing big pieces and you're doing a business, 
you shouldn't have to settle with okay you know it's either you have to be completely fully behind it that yeah this is you know top quality i'm going to be using this product again i'm, I'm not going to settle for okay no nah, i'm not doing it jamie i'm going to try these transfers sorry someday i'll work up the new um oh, hold on you know jamie it's just practice it really is i mean and again i'm i'm self-taught so if i can do it anybody can do it it's just practice and so this is one of the things i was going to talk to you about um and then for some reason um i forgot because you know at that age where i can't remember my name anymore but i was going to talk to you about doing the image transfer because I've been doing image transfers for, I don't know, four years, five years maybe, probably somewhere around there. Um, and I really like them. And so my business, you know, I'm just, it's just me doing it at home, selling on my website, selling on Etsy, selling locally, do um, small amount of commission work. Um, I, I yeah, I, I kind of am okay with commission as long as I get the freedom to do what I want to do. <laughs> so, you know, if you're going to pay me to do commission work, you have to know that it's my vision, it's not yours. <laughs> so just pay me. Um, so I had a few people um, tell me that I should stop, not stop, I should limit the image transfer work that I do because... Um, it's kind of limiting. I mean, not everybody wants, you know, pictures on their furniture. And um, they said I would be more successful financially wise if I just focus on painting. And they have a really good point. I probably would be, but I can't stop. And I, I think because I've done it for so long that, you know, I've practiced and practiced and I finally... I'm kind of at the stage now where I know I'm pretty good at it. And so now I don't want to stop. And I think my I think my name is kind of like known as, you know, for the image transfers. Um so yeah, I don't know why I got onto that. Jamie, what did you oh about the practice, yes, just try it, try small and just practice. Um You're gonna, uh, so, sorry Janice. Um, you're gonna do image transfer on a really massive piece. Good luck. <laughs> you have to show me. I mean, I've done probably my biggest transfers probably been about nine tiles. Um, and, and that was, mm, I hope you never stop. I know. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just, I, it's so much fun. I love doing it. I think, you know, because I'm now, um, more confident in what I'm, what I do, I think my, the natural progression will be for me to start teaching. Um, so, that I'm kind of, that's my thing for this year is that um you know let's get going Diane get organized you start teaching um and do more face to face because I've done one um tutorial um and that was fun editing was a pain oh my god technology oh <laughs> Oh my gosh, no. Um, and I thought about doing live painting tutorials, but I don't, I don't know um, because it takes me so long. You'd be so bored. I mean, I can like paint and I can paint and it'll be three hours and then I'll go I'll stop and I'll have a cup of tea and I'll come back and I'm like, no, 
need something else and so then I'll do that and it's continual I drive myself nuts because I can't make a decision just... <laughs> so the idea of you being behind the camera watching me figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do um, you think I'd be good I'd fly across the country oh oh Melody why can't you say that you're in Italy and I would come and we would have wine um, but yeah so the teaching aspect um, I do want to do I'm not sure like I say I think the online thing would be I think you'd be really 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 bored I think you'd be like you pick a color good sake pick a color I need to order a color what is it is it blue is it gray oh my god so I don't know but I do want to paint that's for sure um and that's it that's it. North Carolina has wine. <laughs> okay, so Janice is saying that maybe a 30 minute video. What can I do in 30 minutes? What would you like to learn in 30 minutes? My gosh. You mean like a, a face to face 30 minute tutorial? Oof. Sorry, I'm not, but I live in a Mediterranean. <laughs> oh, bless you, Melanie. Bless your heart. You try. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um. Please feel free to share my Facebook Live. Come to Florida. Help me paint this monster. Take me out the kayaks. No, I can't do anything. You could edit it down to brush techniques, mixing pigments. Um, I honestly, heart, hand over heart, cannot teach you how to mix pigments because I don't know. Uh, I, I, what this is me teaching you how to mix pigments, okay. So you get this blue and then you just like eyeball it and you put it into this little bit of water and by a little bit I mean a little bit and then you stir it and then oh do you like that color okay so let's put some what do you have over the brown let's just I bought that that's what I was doing I was like just talking to myself hoping that the color turned out nice because I did not want to waste those pigments because I strongly object to paying $20, $30 for a little container of pigment. Does not make me a happy camper. So there you go, and there you are. I'm like just talking absolute drivel now. Um, so yeah, feel free to share this totally useless Facebook Live. Um, I will be hopefully on here again tomorrow. Um, you can watch or you can choose not to watch. We're all about choice here. Um, so yeah, thank you for indulging me. Um, you know, it's Monday afternoon. What are you going to do? So again, thank you, thank you. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.